you should know who your top 10 clients are. You know, if you're listening to this, you don't know who your top 10 clients are, meaning, you know, look at your uh, revenue for the past year, for example. And welcome to a new episode of uh, Digital Coffee Marketing Brew, and I'm your host, Brett Deister, and always just please subscribe to this podcast. It really does help and leave a five-star review. But anyways, we're going to be talking about customer retention, RIO. It's just one of those things that really, really is like the focus in the forefront of a lot of businesses right now just because of inflation and everything else. And all businesses are trying to figure out what they can use and what they can't use. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to get into it with Swire right now, and he is just person that has helped customers with growth with sales retain employees and just helps with customers in general he's been an entrepreneur business owner for 2000 in 2003 but he's based in los angeles and he's just specifically about custom branded products but we're going to get into it so welcome to the show thank you for having me on our show brad it's nice to be here Yes, the first question is all my guests. Are you a coffee or tea drinker? Uh, coffee. I have it here. Uh, I mean, like, like specific brews that you like, like dark, medium, light. I like the Pete's uh, coffee, the one that they now carry at, at Costco. I have that every morning. Oh, got you. But I gave a brief explanation about your expertise, but can you give our listeners a little bit more about what you do and your business as well? Thank you. Uh, my name is Swire Ho. People also call me the promo guy. I'm in the promotional product industry. People, when people think about our industry, they normally use the word Swire, which stands for stuff we all get. You know, since we're having this conversation, you know that I'm not for giving away to everyone. So I help my client to grow sales, to retain the client, you know, to uh, give people a meaning to be loyal to their brand. I'm sure that, you know, you have a lot of questions for me, Brad, and, you know, let's go from there. Oh, right. right. And the first thing is just the, the current economy right now, like interest rates are high and everything's just, everything's up. Let's just say that food's up, everything's up. So like in the business sector right now, how can you, how can you retain that customer loyalty in the in a economy where no one's really sure where it's going and everybody's really just like waiting for the ball to drop? That's a tough question to answer. And then, you know, you could do your part, I think, by understand your customer. Because, you know, think about your own, your own experience. You know, when is the last time that you order from a company, you know, big or small, that they ever contact you after the sale? Chances are none of us have, or they might send an email survey, you know, things like that. But really, when is the last time that they try to reach out to you uh, asking you, are you happy with the service? And then if you are, and if you're a smart sales uh, person, then if you know that your customer is happy, then you will probably ask this follow-up question. Do you happen to know other friends or colleagues that could also use our product and services? Would you mind to introduce me to them? So not only you are you know, checking in, sometimes they will give you their concern or sometimes they complain. You have to address it. And you know, once you address those concerns, then you're actually asking for more referral. Maybe you ask for the review, right? So you're actually using this time to connect with your client, building the relationship. At the same time, you are driving up the referral for your business. So I mean, it's more about the personal touch because, like I said, I use services and all. They just give me an email like, "Thank you for signing up," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, whatever." Like I get a lot of those, so I kind of see them but I don't really open them. Yeah, because a lot of time, right, when we call, we're trying to, let's say, you know, we're trying to check our package, right? We call the call center, you know, they're a big company. Then you know that whatever nice things that they say to you are not really going to translate to actual action. But if you are, you know, listening to this and if you can make changes or make updates for things that you do when people call you for concern, you know, that's how you are able to build that relationship and building that loyalty because, wow, I address my concern, they take notes to it, and they change it. When is the last time you see any company do that? Not very many. I mean, they ask for, like, reviews, but they all want the five-star reviews. They don't want the bad reviews. But when you ask for reviews, the majority of the reviews you're going to get are usually all bad because people are upset of you and they were like, I want to make sure that you- – that people know I don't like you. So how do you actually get those better reviews? Well, 
that's the first step. You know, you, you should reach out to uh, the client or people who purchase from you and then just check in. You know, are you happy with how the product was delivered or you know how the service were performed? You know, sometimes you do get, you know, the angry people, right? To leave the one star review. Then maybe they just want to vent. Maybe they just want you to show up at a different time or maybe do things a little uh, differently. So if you actually address that, you know, so you already eliminate those uh, one star review, you know, but because sometimes people want to complain and maybe they are upset a little bit, but when no one is really listening to them, then it kind of escalate. And then they want to let everyone know on the internet, on the forum knows that I really hate this company and don't work with them ever again. So for like the PR person, is it up to them to like figure out how they can work with customer service to at least give that personal or PR touch to it? Because it is about awareness, but also customer retention as well. So should the PR people be like not micromanaging, but at least understanding like what customer service or the call centers are going through? Well, depending on the size of your company, right? So if you're a smaller company, obviously the sales rep or the owner itself can do that call. But if you are talking about a bigger organization, you know, the product specialist or a team should be dedicated to those follow-up calls because, you know, you want to have customers uh, that are happy. You know, think about this, you know, right? When I work with customers, you know, they spend a lot of money trying to acquire a customer. They spend a lot of money, sometimes millions, right? To get people in the door. But when I ask them, how much do you spend on retaining your customer? A lot of them actually don't have any budget. But think about this. People already purchased from you. They already trusted you, right? You know, to uh, interact, uh, to pay for the transaction the first time. Why not keep them happy so they will actually do more reorders for you, do the review that you're hoping to do, or really get... Uh, them to turn into a mini ambassador, what I call, and to tell other people their experience. So to spread the word, we talk about uh, user generated content a lot. So, you know, by, by a user, actually, not, sometimes when you go to U YouTube review, uh, they're not paying, you know, they're just people buying the product, they use the product or services, and then they just tell their followers what their thoughts about that product and services. So you can actually encourage uh, those content, if you're in touch with your customer base and actually you could guide them or coach them a little bit, if you're really happy with what we do, would you willing to share your experience uh, with others? So that's how you actually build up your loyalties and, and build fans, you know, they are, you know, like to share your work with others. So let's say like a business, maybe it's more likely a small business hasn't really created that type of user-generated content program, how would they start? Would they start just start you, like Googling the YouTube videos or LinkedIn or whatever and finding those people that actually like their products or should they already know through like their email list and everything or even from how long their customers have been using their product, should they know through there? Like how would they be able to build this out? That's a great question. So if you are a small business, you know, let's, let's go into a small business uh, example. So you should know who your top 10 clients are. You know, if you're listening to this, you don't know who your top 10 clients are, meaning, you know, look at your uh, revenue for the past year, for example. Who are the company and who are the type of person who purchased with you the most? Really dive deep off why they purchased from you. You know, how was the transaction? You know, do you know that actually they're happy or not? If you don't know, you should actually dial, uh, pick up the phone and, and call the customer. So what you want to do is, you know, you wanted to find out uh, what demographics, what target clients you are uh, more engaged with versus other. And don't try to go for, a, a, I want to target everyone approach. If these clients, you know, are paying you the most, uh, these are your top 10, are there similarity, you know, maybe a job title, maybe their demographics, or maybe their company size, there are, you know, there are similar. So then you know that you are more, you're better in, in that sector, you know? And then if you build a relationship, you know, and you really ask that question, are you happy with what we have done for you? And, you know, granted, if they are, are you able to connect us with other people or maybe other departments that could also benefit from our, from our product and services? You'd be surprised that without glowing uh, a single customer, you know, you can actually build on, on your uh, current client the way uh, to almost double your business at least. 
And so would this be different from B2B and B2C? Because obviously B2B may actually be on more LinkedIn and then B2C you could probably find on more, more YouTube. Or have you seen like there really is no difference with user-generated content from B2B or B2C? Well, for, for B2B, it would make sense because if you, you know, for example, if you provide uh, services to a large organization, chances are there are other departments who could also benefit from you. But if you use B2C, going back to our uh, example earlier for user-generated content, if you know that your top 10 client, they always buy from you, obviously they like you, right? If not, they won't be buying from you. Are you willing to get on maybe on a call or maybe do a short video? You know, we all have our cell phones, right? It's easy for us to do a quick video or record something that you want. So you're actually encouraging your top 10 client if you're B2C uh, for generated content because we care more about what others say about your company than what you're saying about your company on ads. And would this tie into like retention and loyalty as well? Because I mean, every business wants that loyalty, loyal customer, because with a loyal customer, they're more willing to buy. And then that also allows for them to do word of mouth because we all know word of mouth is king. It's always been king. There's nothing you could do to make it, to do anything better than word of mouth. Word of mouth is just like the top end of marketing because you have to do the least amount of work, but you get the most impact out of it. Yeah, happy customers are a loyal customer. So, you know, it it starts from from the top, right? You have to make sure that your customers are happy so they will keep coming back and they might have a chance to tell their friends or, you know, spread the word for you and, you know, ultimately if you if you do everything right, you can actually turn them into a mini ambassador. So, you know, there are brands that we are uh connected. Like when you ask me what coffee I drink, Pits don't pay me nothing, right? I pay money to buy my own coffee. But since I like it so much, right, and I talk about it on the podcast, so in in a way, you know, it, it might spark curiosity. If you haven't tried uh, Pete's coffees that are on sale at Costco, they might actually try. So, you know, these are ways that you could coach your client and then to make sure, first make sure that they're happy and then for ways that they could share how good you are. So, you know, these are something that, takes time to plan, but it will be beneficial to a company. You don't always want to go for look for a new customer. You know, keep your current client happy and keep them engaged and uh, keep and build more re repeat customer. So you'd be surprised that you could grow your business faster that way. It's true. It's easier or it's cost effective to keep existing customers than it is to buy new customers because you got to do a lot of marketing. You got to convince them. I think it takes an average about like seven different points of interaction to get a new customer. I mean, it's just a lot of extra work to get new customers and to keep the existing ones happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a lot cheaper to to keep a, a current client than you know to spend money uh, always prospecting, which you you should you should be doing. But you know, think about always think about your uh, current client too, and uh, ask them this question. And people don't do that uh, much often. You know, with all the choices that you have. You know, why did you decide that you wanted to purchase from you? You know, so that's a, like the golden question. You know, these are paying customers. You, you know, I don't really care what industry that you're in. If you're in business, then you have competitors and people have choices, right? Either uh, your competitor or they can choose not to buy, right? They can ever, always choose not to buy. They decided to spend money with you. Don't you want to know and get into the mindset, you know, what you have done, right? So do you be, you know, You'll be in for a treat. You know, sometimes they will tell you things that you have not thought of. And, you know, if you're doing that thing right, you know, maybe the, uh, if you wanted to add more to it, that's where you should double down. Let's say there is a customer and they've been buying from you, but then you you start to see that maybe they don't want to buy you anymore or like they, they canceled it. And I mean, we all get those things like, why you canceled? It's like, well, I don't really want to answer questions. I just don't like your product. How do you get them to come back? Because like I said, you want to keep your returning customers, but let's say they just aren't satisfied anymore. How would you go about like keeping them or gaining them back? Well, depending on you know the industry, right? We we we're speaking on a very broad question. So, uh, I think the best customer who can do the best retention, you know, we let's talk about like uh, DSLR camera, right? Canon, 
you know, right? They they have a big following, you know, people who are professional, who are, you know, amateur like myself buy Canons. But how do they keep people keep buying the new camera? You know, they have different education seminar. They have magazines. They have forums. If I ever run into any questions uh, with my Canon camera that I'm using, I could hop onto a forum and search any database that I need. You know, think about how you can educate people. They might not engage with you if you call them, you know, that's the society we've lived in. We don't want to be on the phone. But if I'm learning something, if I'm uh, learning from others how I'm able to improve, you know, my use of my cameras, I'm engaged. So think about when people walk away from you, are they, are they engaging with you? Do you see them uh, engaging you with social media? Are you sending them uh, news about your your upcoming products, or do you just call them uh, at your annual renew? So those are those are something that will contribute why people are leaving your company. And how do you convince? Just let's say you you because you have to do both. You have to keep your regular customers, but you have to convince new customers because you always every business is looking for new customers. It's just you have to balance it out. So how do you how do you get that, or how do you convince new customers about your return on investment because I mean that's the big question is like how do we get people to come over let's say they're using a competitor but we need to figure out our RIO and we need to convince them that our return on investment is better than theirs so how do you get how do you figure that part out that's a million dollar question right like so if we can answer that then we <laughs> then we can solve a, a lot of problems I would say if it was me to do that I will go back to what I talked about. Uh, find out who your top 10 customers are. And so look at these uh, 10 businesses or 10 individuals, right? If you're B2C, look at if you can find any pattern in there. So then you know, uh, you know, who to go after. If you uh, t target, you know, if those, your top 10, uh, you know, fits the criteria of the new prospect that you are going after. So then, you know, you're highly uh, likely chances to get that. You know, if you're, Talking about small business, you shouldn't focus everyone everywhere. So uh, it's okay to focus on a niche and you, you have to be comfortable about where you are so your marketing message are more clear because you're talking to a specific type of uh, audience and you don't just blast it out to everyone in the universe or on social media because not everyone, everyone can relate it to the message or the product and service that, that you offer. What is it if a small business doesn't understand their niche? How would they go about figuring that part out? Because a lot of people who start businesses are like, I'm going to do this. Or even podcasts, for example, they're like, I'm going to – basically, my podcast will be for everybody. And you're like, well, that's not really the most prudent thing to do. So how do you, like, figure that part out? Because I think a lot of businesses think they figured it out, and then they go, no, that actually is very wrong. I, I would still stick with uh, sticking to – you know, your revenue, right? You know, or if you're a newer business, you know, think about who engaged with your content the most. Or uh, if you are, you know, brand new in the business, you know, talk to people and see uh, who would like to engage with you more than you build down your, on your list. But, you know, if you have been in business for a little bit, uh, it, it won't go wrong by going back to your uh, paying customer because, you know, they have their choices. They choose to work with you. Do you know why they work with you? You know, a lot of businesses don't know that. So it's, it's about figuring out from your return customers and your loyal return customers, let's say like five years or maybe two or three years or some type of longevity, like what what they like about the product and then doing PR and like branding that out, be like, this is why people love us. It could go on to a lot of business because, you know, there are people who think buying a camera at $500 is expensive, but there are professionals who not even look at $500 camera. So you might think that your product and services might be expensive or obscure, weird, whatever that it is, because you're not talking uh, to the right uh, audience. If you are finding the right audience who, who are willing, you know, engage with your content. You know, I know you're a gamer uh, yourself, Brad. Like if I am playing a different game than you are, if you're really enthusiastic about your game, since I don't play your game, I won't be listening to you. So it's your job, you know, to connect with, you know, gaming industry, for example, uh, they're hardcore fans playing a certain game. They won't play other games at all, right? So 
it's the job for the company or for content creator to find those people within the community and to speak the language and to speak to them. What do they really like? Then you can actually answer a lot of your own question. How do I market? Which platform do I use? Do I use ad? Do I use social media? Am I going to be on Twitch or YouTube? This can be answered if you really can think of that question. And if you have zero customers starting in day one, think of a dream customer who who, uh, who have unlimited budget, who are willing to buy what you sell. You know, who are they? What income level or what title or what demographics they're, they're, they're going to be in? And then you can actually build your own target audience based on that from, from your dream. Dang, someone who's selling a hundred dollar camera and thinks that's expensive, please talk to me because it's not expensive at all. <laughs> Right. It, it just depends on who you talk to, right? You know, so maybe, you know, things that you would like to spend, but if you're talking about uh, people that are not in that industry, so they will think you're ridiculous, but you're talking about the right audience, uh, people who are engaged with those uh, content, then it's a, a meaningful conversation that, and they want more. How do I get more from you, uh, Brad? So as a company, it's your job to find out uh, who you really cater to. And then if not, you know, dream up a dream client. You know, what should they be? You know, what should they be doing? Like, where did they go to consume the content? So uh, with that, you can answer, actually answer a lot of the question and avoid yourself going in circle and wasting your money uh, in marketing and PR. And then, I mean, for your loyal customers, should you do like a specific like email newsletter and stuff and like specific promos maybe for like the the longevity of like whoever the customer is should you have like specific things for your really loyal customers because i mean they may be your early adapters they may be the ones that are like shouting from the rooftops should you have like a specific thing for them to make them feel like that you care about them because i mean you really should but a lot of times businesses are just like yeah yeah they're paying they're buying from us we don't really care as long as they're buying from us we don't really have to do much yeah, in, in my line of work, you know, what I think really powerful is turn your customer into media ambassador uh, for your brand. So you don't really have to spend too much, you know, going back to the gaming uh, community again, Brad, let's say if I'm a game uh, manufacturer and I just create that uh, a special t-shirts for uh, 150 of my best creator. So if you're able to create content for our upcoming game, for example, then I will send you that uh, brand new T-shirt, you know, we'll send to you. The T-shirt itself doesn't cut that, cost that much, but by you doing that, you're actually encouraging people to uh, do user-generated content for your upcoming release. And then, you know, you know that people like to brag about, you know, I'm special, right? I'm wearing that T-shirt now saying that I'm the content creator because I win that 150 uh, creator special, for example, then uh, they actually become ambassador, so to speak, for your brand. They will be wearing your T-shirts. And if other people ask them, now, who did you get, get that T-shirt from? What do you think they're going to say? Uh, I got it for creating content for this company and they gave me a shirt because of how I created the content. But I also love the game too, because from your example, from gamers, if we do not love the game, we will let you know how much we do not love your game. <laughs> So we could substitute that with different products and different camp campaign, right? So we actually get people uh, first to engage with us. You know, they give us the user generated content all the, for the cost for printing 150 t-shirts. Think about that you know, as a cost savings and return on investment standpoint. You're actually using, sometimes you don't even have to use physical product. You could give people a batch or a skin, right? In certain game, then you get people go crazy, right? Giving you all kinds of content. So smart company knows how to engage with their community and different industry have different engagement uh, that want to do. Uh, maybe we're talk, uh, talking about moms that have uh, kids in school. So that would be a different approach than gamers. And when we talk about maybe B2B, only CEO with, with uh, respond. There are different approach. So that's why I don't like to work swag. You know, I like to be focused and ask really deep dive question. Who are our target audience? Who are they? Tell me more about who they are. Then when we pick the right promotional product for them, then we could be really specific and create something that they like and they will want to use it every single day of their life. Even going back to your camera thing, like it may be an exclusive LUT for them as well to use for video or their picture taking, depending on how they use your camera. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are a lot of creative ways. Uh, you know, even if you say I don't, I don't have you know thousands of dollar budget, I have three hundred dollars, right? So I'll tell you a good one. You know, you could do three hundred dollar on a on one product, and then assuming that you already have a, a small social media following, do a sweepstakes. You know, say. Uh, you tag a friend, do all the call to action that you want, sign up for a newsletter, maybe visit a, a new website, uh, tag a friend. You know, I can't tell you how many times that I did that just to try to win something that is $5. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree with you with the goal on the sweepstakes is have one defined goal. So if it's like new people on your newsletter, have that defined goal. If it's If it's getting people to buy more of your product, then have that one goal. If it's more social media following, have that one goal. But yeah, if you have like five different ones, people are like, wait, what am I doing again? <laughs> yeah, I agree. And uh, people who listen to this podcast, they're like, man, you've got a lot of great knowledge and advice. How do they find you online to learn more? Thank you, Brad. Uh, if they wanted to talk business, you know, uh, Google me, Swaiho, hashtag the promo guy, they'll see some of the work that I've done. And for your listener, I will also create a backlink that they can actually uh, book me for a consultation meeting. I'll run you through all the scenario questions. So to uh, and then drill down to a proposal who we are a target audience that we could create a custom uh, ideal profile for them and find the right product that can engage with you on the campaign that you want. So uh, I will send that uh, link to you for your listeners. All right. Any final thoughts for listeners? I think we talk about a lot of stuff, Brad. I think, you know, if we drill down to one of that, really should you have to answer for yourself before you're spending any uh, marketing dollar. Who are your target audience? If you answer the questions, you solve a lot of questions and you you, you stop wasting your, your money in things that you don't need to do. That's even good advice for podcasters, podcasters who are your ideal listeners. And uh, thank you for joining uh, this podcast. Uh, we really appreciate what you did and shared. So just thank you for joining. Thank you, Brad. And thank you, as always, please subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite podcasting apps with a five-star review. Let us help with the podcast and let us know how we're doing and do better for you. And join us next week as we talk to another great father in the PR marketing PR marketing industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding your target audience, your loyal customers, and your retention of those loyal customers. And see you next week. Later. <laughs>